Hi guys, my name is Nick Broughton and I'm Random Fish. Hit the subscribe button and let's all be Random Fishes together. So, yeah, a few things have changed since I last saw you. Um, first off, these. Second, this. Um, and last of all, I really did a bit of this service. I reviewed Riding Faith not that long ago and I said that I was going to review Grace Unplugged next and that never happened. Primarily because I didn't really know what to say about it because I found myself legitimately liking parts of the film and legitimately hating other parts of it. For those of you who don't know, Grace Unplugged is a film that was made with AJ McKellar. Um, it's about an 18 year old Christian singer who goes out on her own after, despite her father's disapproval to become a a pop star, rock star, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, she has trouble writing her own songs. She then has to go back to her family because she realizes that that's where she wants to be. That she doesn't want to be some kind of pop star sellout type thing and she instead wants to write her own fairly good Christian music. Now that on its own is not a problem. It's a downside better than some of the the stuff from from the guys who made God's Not Dead, the Pure Flix people. I mean, hell, that could have been a fairly decent story. So what was it about the film that bugged me? It wasn't so much the plot. It wasn't the characters. Then I realized what my problem with the film was. It was in the dialogue. I don't know that's gonna sound weird, but hear me out here. I've always maintained that a film's main prognosis is that it has to have a good plot, good, good, a good look, and memorable characters. The problem is, is that within those three mentalities, the characters aren't exactly that well defined. And I know what you're going to say, in some cases, in certain films, you don't need to have well defined characters. I mean, hell, you could take two things that I absolutely love, Star Wars and Power Rangers. Throughout most of the original trilogy, the the original three, Luke, Leia, and Han, barely had any characterization, with the exception of Han, maybe Leia, and more Chewbacca. But not so much with Luke. It didn't feel like he had much of a personality shift or any kind of change in his arc there. Yeah, he had emotional moments, and yes, he was great in it, but it just didn't feel very much like he was an established character. But to be honest, it's worse in Power Rangers. The original team in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers just felt like cardboard cutouts of goody goods. I mean, at least in Star Wars you had sarcasm to go along with it, which was nice enough as it was. And then I began to apply this logic to Grace Unplugged, and, and I'm sorry, but the dialogue and the characters? This is where the film falls flat. And something of a larger problem that I wanted to bring up. To give you a basic idea, <sighs> The averageness of the dialogue throughout the film, at least in the beginning part of the film, was along the lines of one sarcastic comment from the teenager, the dad goes into a speech. Then the mum has a go at the dad, which also then incites some kind of speech from either one of them or both of them. Um, and then it's just, there, there appears to be one liners followed by speech, one liners followed by speech, one liners followed by speech. There doesn't appear to be any banter for lack of a better term, it just didn't feel like there was bantery conversation. And I know that dialogue, much like humour and opinion, is a subjective concept. And that everyone has their own ideas about what makes good or not good conversation. I get that. But when I feel myself sitting there watching the film going, I want to skip bits of the film that are talking and go straight to things that are like just the music, I know I'm in trouble. Because I'll be honest, as a Christian myself, and I've played in Christian rock bands, I can honestly say that sometimes the songs, they feel a little flat. And I'm not just saying that because I happen to be someone who thinks he can get away with saying it. I, legitimately, sometimes the songs feel flat to me. Some of them do have very good lyrics and good power with it, but it just feels very flat. And that's what it felt like watching this movie. When the songs are the ideal escape in Christian rock? It's not good, people. It just ain't. But what was I meaning talking about this as a problem in a more generalized term? My problem comes from the concept of 
Christian film. I've already mentioned The God's Not Dead and the Pure Flix people. They're in a completely separate camp. But I will come back to them. Christian films, in general, seem to have this niche with their dialogue. The idea of talking about God, making speeches about God, and the occasional sarcastic character saying, oh, yeah, well, God. And that be that. This was apparent in writing Faith. This was apparent in uh, Sunday School Musical, another horrible Christian film that I do not recommend that you see. Um, actually, no, I do recommend you see it simply to see you put through the same torture I was. Um, I've never reviewed Sunday School Musical because, honestly, I couldn't think about how to describe it. Plus, if I'm going to be deadly honest with you, it's already been done by a much more talented reviewer than myself, that being the cinema snob. But, here's where I honestly feel like it comes into it. The dialogue is so... It's trying so hard not to be offensive and trying so hard to be just generally nice and being at that like nice little flat level where no one gets offended. That's where you fall flat. Again, I speak as a Christian myself, but I believe in dialogue that moves people, dialogue that actually gives you something to work with within the scene. I honestly don't believe the likes of the Kevin Smith films or Star Wars, or any Power Rangers series, or hell, anything that I've watched over the few years that I've been alive, it doesn't... You need something to work with the dialogue to be able to connect you to it. And I do understand that Christians do connect with the way, with the word of God being spoken. That's fine. But for me at least, and I don't know if this is the same for other young, young or I say young, I'm 30 for crying out loud, but those of us who grew up as young Christians, who actually were kind of born at the birth of this kind of mentality, the idea of the, of the Christian film genre, if you will, honestly, what I want is philosophical conversation. I want to be able to have a conversation with a real human being who also happens to believe in God. Have that be the stepping stone. As I keep on saying, in writing faith, just a little bit in writing faith anyway. I mean, there's problems with that film. Obviously, I've gone into them in my in my review of it, but still. But the point was that they were using God as a stepping stone to discuss something. And honestly, in this film, there's a whole bit where there's an intern that she meets. She runs away from home works with this music producer to try and create this album and she's trying to write her own song and she's failing miserably. She goes to this intern's house for dinner. Uh, this intern named Quentin, Quentin by, by the way. Either they're making a very bizarre reference to Quentin Tarantino or Quentin Beck from Spider-Man. Either way, that's kind of hilarious to me. But when she goes to his house for dinner, he would then sit there and discuss God with her and that would be the reason why she would then move on to something else. The idea of saying God doesn't want you to do something so you should do this. Honestly, the way I would have phrased that scene would be entirely different. The idea of it being that, for example, she sits there and she complains about not being able to write the song and he talks to her about how he feels when he listens to songs and then, I don't know, brings up, say, since his name's plastered pretty much all over the entire movie and he's part of the final scene, Chris Tomlin. Talk about a Chris Tomlin song. Talk about the lyrics in that song, in one of his songs. And talk about how it resonates with you or how you honestly feel like, for example, music is something that connects us to a higher power, something that would connect us to God. And when you use your music to connect to, you, you need to use your music to connect to something. It doesn't feel like you're connecting to anything. Have that be something. Have the connection be the thing that you talk about. I don't, I didn't feel like that's what they were talking about. I didn't have that emotional resonance with the dialogue. I didn't have that emotional resonance with the scene. All I did was sit there and go, yeah, 
that's a scene. I guess I'm honestly not sure anymore. When I can't feel an emotional connection to a scene, you have failed to have my attention. The fact that I watched this film all the way through simply for the idea of reviewing this for the channel, I'm sorry, but that was a freaking miracle and a half. It just felt like a miracle. And speaking of this, I myself am currently trying to sit down and write a Christian movie that I would not only be proud to have made, but something that I honestly would feel have a connection to people of my generation, of my life. The problem is, is that I honestly feel like a lot of these people that make these Christian movies have this much darker agenda, this, uh, this agenda of pushing God, this agenda of pushing his abilities on people. And while I don't blame you for wanting to speak about your beliefs in any real way, here's the problem. When you have people like Pure Flix, who seem to, throughout a lot of their films, have what's called the uh, the, Christ the Christianity, oh poor Christian uh, sort of mentality, this idea that the you know, persecution of the Christians is still going on in today's world. It might still be going on in today's world. I don't know. I don't live in America, but I live here. And here, are Christians not always liked? Of course they're not. But in the same way that no one in religion is almost liked throughout the throughout England. I mean, I'm pretty sure atheists are more friggin' popular than we are sometimes. But that doesn't mean that we have to make a film to go, Oh, look at us. Oh, poor little Christians. No. We talk about what we want to talk about. We say what we want to say. We let people make up their own minds. And while I understand the idea of film is to put someone's uh, put a thought in someone's head, it does not invite us and it does not mean for us to force that idea upon someone. So again, in that same way that I sort of put Pure Flix over here in this sort of section of the persecuted Christian's patheticness, I kind of put Grace Unplugged over here, this place where it's trying it's trying to give off a good message, but it's just getting the dialogue wrong. Now, this will be a relatively short video in place of a lot of other things, purely because I'm trying to reduce the amount of times that I speak in these videos, and I want it to be an incredibly long video every single time. I'm not a nostalgia critic, nor am I cinema snob, nor am I any of these big reviewers out there. But before I go, I want to make, I want to make a request of you. Please, give me some titles. Give me something to work with. Because, unfortunately, I am limited in what I can get. I do not have Disney+. Plus. I do not have uh, Amazon Prime. I do not have any of these streaming services. With the exception of Netflix and my DVD player. With that being said, I do want to watch more films that you guys would like for me to do. Now, I don't know if this means, for example, that I would set up, say, a Patreon account where you guys can give me your ideas and then pay me the money to be able to edit these things better or at least figure out how to edit these things better and by that same token to then um, to be able to give you guys a much more decent and more um, well-rounded video. So with all that being said, Please, comment below, let me know what you th guys think of it, let me know if that's something you might want to do in the future. Um, it's something that I'm very seriously considering, but I would like it, I would like to know what you guys think, because I really don't want to try and start something like this if I'm not going to be able to sort of pull it off, I guess is the right way of putting it. I mean, I'll still give it a try, but... <laughs> It would be nice to know that there'd be people out there who actually would want to do something like that. But anyway, with all that being said, Random Fish out.